We would like to have Taylor series of complex functions, so we will need to be able to deal with series of complex numbers. As you remember from real analysis, series are defined in terms of a sequence. So we need sequences of complex numbers first. Fortunately, they behave quite similar to their real counterparts. Let us look at the definition of a sequence first. Well, sequence is an ordered list of complex numbers, denoted as Zn, n from 1 to infinity, so Z1, Z2, Z3, etc., where now the Zn are numbers in C complex numbers. So let's take a look at two examples. For example, Zn equals 1 plus i over 2, then the uh, <coughs> Z1 would be 1 plus i over 2, and Z2 would be uh, 1 plus i over 2 squared, and if you work it out, you get i over 2. Our second example here, the uh, Zn equals square root of 2 over 2 times e to the power pi i over 4 to the power n. So the uh, Z1 would be square root of 2 over 2 times e to the power pi i over 4. And if you plug in n equals 2, uh, square root of 2 over 2 squared becomes 1 half, and 2 times uh, pi over 4 equals pi over 2, so you get 1 half times e to the power uh, i pi over 2. Well, this quantity equals i, of course, so you get, in fact, i over 2, so those are the same, this one and that one. Uh, and in fact, if you work out with the uh, order formula, the first term, this one and this one are also the same. In fact, the sequences of examples 1 and 2 are the same, and the second one is just the first one written in polar form. So, when does a sequence converge? Well, it's the same as in the real case. A uh, sequence of com uh, complex numbers converges if eventually you get very close to a limit point z. So what does very close mean in terms of complex numbers? Well, it means that the norm of the zn and the z, it gets, uh, the, di uh, the difference in norm gets arbitrarily small. So that's how the limit is defined. So sequence has a limit z. If you can get as close to it as you want, so if for any epsilon bigger than zero, which is probably some small number, you can find a capital N, so if you're far enough in your sequence, such that your distance becomes arbitrarily small, smaller than this epsilon, as long as you're further than this capital N. Uh, well, if this limit exists, sequence is con called convergence, and if the limit does not exist, the uh, sequence is called divergence. You see, this is exactly uh, the same as for uh, sequences of real numbers. Uh, the only difference is uh, in here, the interpretation of this norm. For real numbers, it's the absolute value, and for complex numbers, it's the norm of the difference. So, let's do an example. Let's take a look at example 2. Well, you have some square root of 2 over 2 to the power n, which becomes smaller and smaller, so we expect at a limit the sequence to be zero, because the norm, gets the, the norm of the numbers gets smaller and smaller. So, how do we prove that? Well, then we have to find a capital N, such that for every epsilon bigger than zero, uh, the Zn gets smaller, uh, and the norm of Zn minus this limit gets smaller than this epsilon. Well, what is this norm? How are we going to find uh, this capital N? Well, the norm of Zn minus Z, well, Z equals zero, that's what we get, so the norm of Zn minus Z is just the norm of Z, and the norm of Z is the norm of this set over here, uh, which is the square root of 2 over 2 to the power n. So we have to show that this can, we can get a smaller than epsilon provided we take n big enough. Well, intuitively this is clear because square root of 2 over 2 is something like 0.7. Uh, so if you square it and take the cube power, etc., it will get smaller and smaller. But well, let's be a bit more precise. Let's prove it just as an example. Uh, so uh, we want uh, to get this here smaller than epsilon, so that means that uh, if you take the uh, natural log on both sides, that n times the this, this log is has to be smaller than the log of epsilon. Now notice that uh, 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 this quantity uh, over here uh, equals uh, 2 to the power minus 1 half, so we can get the minus 1 half in front, so that's what we do over here. 
and then if you uh, solve for n, you have to be careful because you are dividing by a negative number. You are dividing by a negative ln2 over 2, so the inequality sign changes to a bigger than, so n has to be bigger than this strange number over here. So let's say we pick capital N as that strange number over there, and round it above. That's probably going to work. And we still have to prove it. Well, now, now the proof is easy as soon as you know which capital N to pick. Uh, we know uh, norm of set n minus set. We knew already it's square root of 2 over 2 to the power n, uh, which is uh, smaller than square root of 2 over 2 to the power uh, capital N. Uh, if you pick uh, your small n bigger than your capital N. Uh, now we know how we've chosen capital N, like that. So we can plug it in over here. Now we can simplify it a bit, take the 2 to the power of minus 2 inside. We have square root of 2 over 2 to the power of minus 2. So we have square root of 2 to the power of minus 2 equals 1 half, and 2 to the power of minus 2 equals 4. So we get 4 over 2 equals 2 over here. And we leave the ln epsilon over ln 2. Uh, which equals the 2 log of epsilon, so we get 2 to the power 2 log of epsilon equals epsilon. So now we've shown that for any epsilon uh, bigger than 0, we can get z minus z in norm smaller than epsi this epsilon, which means that our sequence converges to 2. So as you see, if you know how to deal with real sequences, complex sequences go exactly the same way.